sums of, talk about partial sums of geometric series. Remember, a geometric series is technically an infinite series, and that would be pointless to talk about, except in certain cases, because if you think about something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's just going to go to infinity every time. It's kind of boring. But partial sums, that's where it's at. So in general, the partial sum of a geometric series would look like this. Now I'm going to run through the derivation of what the formula is. You don't need to worry about it. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but well, I just want to show you where it comes from. But in general, s of n would be the first term plus the first term times r plus the first term times r squared all the way out to, hey, that's familiar. That's the explicit formula for a geometric sequence, right? Now, watch this. What would happen if I multiplied both of this, this whole thing by r? Well, everything gets multiplied by r, so I have r times s sub n because I'd have to multiply both sides of the equation. But the first term would now become a sub 1 times r, and the second term would get 1 power higher and so on. So instead of ending at n minus 1, it would end at, well, guess what n minus 1 plus 1 is? Remember, if you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Now a sub 1 times r to the n. Now, this is something that you're not, once again, not expected, but just so you see what happens here. If you look carefully, there's a little bit of correspondence going on here. Here's what I mean. What if I were to subtract these two? In other words, what if I took this whole thing minus this whole thing? Well, if you look carefully, s of n minus r times s of n. Right there, right? So this side would simply become this bit right here. Not a problem, right? Um, it becomes a little bit trickier when we talk about the other side, but if you follow along, it's not that bad. So up here, I got an a sub 1. There's no a sub 1 here, so this a sub 1 is going to come on down. Yay! So a sub 1, a sub 1. What happens to a sub 1 times r and a sub 1 times r? Well, I'm subtracting this whole mess, which means what? This is going to cancel. a sub 1 r squared. a sub 1 r cubed. Everything in between. That's what these little dots mean, everything in between. All the way up to and including, you guessed it. But when the dust settles, what's left? a sub 1 times r to the n, which we're also subtracting, which is why it becomes a minus. Now, with a little bit of skullduggery, oh, wait, wait, wait. Distributive property. That's not skullduggery. Skullduggery is what pirates do. We're mathematicians, so we use the distributive property. That is, I factored out an a sub 1, and I factored out an s sub n. Why, you say, why? Well, if you look at this carefully, what can I do? <gasps> look at that. Isn't that weird? That means if I were to divide both sides by 1 minus r, what would happen? I would get s sub n all by itself. And what, pray tell, does s sub n represent? Why, it represents the sum of... Well, what exactly is n? Hmm. Oh, n is the number of terms. So this assumes that we're starting at the first term and adding it all up to the nth term. Okay? So here's an example. If I want to find s of 10 of 2 times 6 times 8, hey, that looks familiar. That's the one where the explicit formula was a sub n equals 2 times 3 to the n minus 1. Quick recap. The first term is 2. And the constant ratio is 3. Now, we want s sub 10, though. How do we do that? Well, s sub 10. Now, be forewarned. If I added up the first 10 numbers here, 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus da 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 it'd get big pretty quick, wouldn't it? But what would I do? Well, I'd take the first term, 2 times 1 minus the constant ratio, which is 3, raised to the... This is why it gets big quickly, 10th power, over 1 minus the constant ratio. There, plugged it in, yes? What is this? Well, 3 to the 10th is a big old number. 3 to the 10th, as a matter of fact, is, pray to the calculator, 59,049. So this is 2 times 1 minus 59,000. 49 over, well, this is 1 minus 3 or negative 2. Now, something good is about to happen here, and that in particular is what? 
Well, if I have a bunch of added num positive numbers and I add them up, I better get a positive, right? 1 minus 59,049 is going to be negative divided by another negative. Yay! Now, in this particular case, and it just happens to be in this particular case, the twos happen to cancel out. So whatever 1 minus 59,049 is, except it's going to be positive because I'm dividing it out by a negative, right? So the sum is going to be 59,048. And because we want to make this readable, we'll go ahead and put a comma there. But that would be the sum of the first 10 terms. I told you it's going to get big quick. Remember, the next term after this would be 54 times 3, or 162, and you get the picture until it's a really big colossal number, which is why we get such a big sum. Okay?